What's going on guys? Welcome back to RC Every Day. Taking a look at the Amigo today. I've got a couple events coming up. I'm going to Texas Crawl Fest here in April and then we've got Beat the Creek in May. And I need to do some changes to some rigs to get things squared away. So if you remember the Amigo, it is my first full interior build. This thing was uh, pretty cool. I mean, it's on an RC four wheel drive Trailfinder 2 short wheelbase, which is not the best crawler. <laughs> More of a trail truck. It had that big boat anchor uh, cross member in the middle. We fixed all that. We've tucked the transfer case up. We've got a nice me sheet metal skid plate and uh, done a lot of things to make this work better. But one of the things I did last, it used to have an old 55 turn Novak goat crawler ESC system. And that thing was way too slow. And then I overdid it. We've got a Holmes Hobby something master purple 27 turn so now it's the wheelie king and it just rides wheelies all the time so I've got a new torque master expert 35 turn this is my go-to this is what I have in all my crawlers uh, it's one of my favorite motors so hopefully most of my crawlers are RC four wheel drive they have the same transmission same axle so it ought to be the right speed that I'm looking for um, it's pretty cool this everything you can see is it piled up in the front Got the uh, receiver over here, you see on top of the servo. I was thinking about putting my, I have one more Reefs Triple Four, and man, those things are nice, but I can't afford to put them in everything, and I was going to put it in here, but I've got a decent Savox in here. Um, you can hear right now it's not making any noise. It is on. It's not the worst one I've had, so we're just going to rock that for now. It's got plenty of torque. Um, we just deal with the crunchy noisiness of it but the thing the main problem with this if I can hold this she just got a little too much get up and go so we're gonna swap that out on this truck first and see what that gets us Alright guys, quick and easy enough. I've got to do some more wire management up here. This is a disaster because i got all these lights wired in. I've got the uh, Baja Design lights on the bumper and I also have split off four headlights on the Amiga body. But I think this is going to be exactly what I was looking for. It's wide open. A little bit more tame. <clears throat> I think the servo will do. So, yeah. It's really cool. i got to adjust my not it's cool, I gotta adjust my opinion, but it's really cool getting to actually meet John Holmes out at USTE and hang out with him. We stayed in the same area and it's pretty cool putting faces to names and getting to hang out with people. I've really been enjoying all these events. Make sure my mesh is still good. I got a little bit of play, but it looks like it's got plenty of power. So I'm going to jack around with the uh, wire management and then I'll show you how difficult this body is to put on. Alright, got all that done. I finally did get some black zip ties, so not replacing all these, but <laughs> it is a tight mess under here. I'm hoping I've got enough room for the wire on the battery there. That's a good spot for it. It's set up against the firewall and I can actually kind of get in there and unplug it in case of emergency. Um, the body is a pain in the butt, so these are, this is like the rear bumper mount for the uh, Tamiya Jeep body that this chassis was kind of designed for. Same platform that this came on, but uh, we've got a couple sets of holes in there and the body actually has holes that line up with those. I've got some spacers that are like 12 millimeter and some long screws and nuts. That's the rear body mount. The front body mount is up here it actually is the bumper mount you know how your trail finder twos have that piece that goes in the front of the chassis and it's two screws on the side that are flush so they clear the leaf springs 
those actually are my body mounts as well. So I've got metal brackets here on the inside of the body that I made. I think they're aluminum. Let's see if you can see that. And these swing down and line up perfectly with those holes. And then you just put your bolt all the way through. It holds the bumper on, holds the body on, and everything is nice and tight. Um, the tricky part is getting the battery in. Oh, there's the rear. You can see I've got the bolt still sticking through with the spacer. So you kind of put the back on first and then force the front down. Meanwhile, trying to shoehorn the battery where it belongs in the middle and plug in your headlights. And, and, and. It actually fits pretty good. <laughs> I'm not going to hook it all up right now because I'm not leaving the LiPo in there this long. But, um... Yeah, that actually fit pretty well. Prove me wrong, why don't you? So this body is an original Tamiya release. I scored this on a Facebook group, oh, five or so years ago. Paid like a hundred bucks for it because they hadn't re-released the Amigo body, or the Moo. And um, <clears throat> it was pretty well worn. It was already painted this color. Has a lot of scratches on it. Um, it's been red primered, gray primered. Somebody actually did some body work on it and then they trailed the snot out of it but it was already banged up a little bit so I sat on it for a while I didn't know what to do with it I love the color I mean the window edges and stuff were already painted black real nice and uh, I had built uh, I had another Amigo body it was one from the Radio Shack it's the same body just a little bit less detailed on some of the other pieces like the grill and um, yeah I just Worked around that and I had one building and I got tired of it, tried to make it something else and then I was like, you know, I really need an Amigo crawler. Trailfinder 2 short wheelbase. It's about the time that came out or so and the rest is history. The interior is made from uh, some rubber made little bowls. The inner fenders are from a storage bowl and the rest of it's just styrene. The door panels and dash were from Loops model. They were for a Pajero, the Mitsubishi body that Tamiya makes. And uh, they look all right. I mean, I, honestly, uh, being a kid back then, I, I can't remember exactly what an Amigo Dash looks like. But that looks like something 90s and foreign, so it worked out. Got some axial race seats in there, handmade roll bar, a few little details here and there, but it's a good truck. Got the new mirrors, the rubber mirrors from Loops model. They're a little bit loose, but yeah, it's a good trail truck. Got some scale stuff. The front bumper I made. That's what brays that out of uh, brake line, I think. No, that's actually solid. I braze solid rod. Look at me. And the rear bumper, a friend had one of these, and he had made a bumper for his, so he made me one too. That um, was pretty expensive. That's actually, I think that was actually TIG welded, and it's got D rings and stuff on it. So it, it's pretty well built truck. But now I'm not even gonna test it. Everything works. I mean, I tested it here on the bench, but. I'm going to just take it like it is, and we'll get out and have some fun with it. See if you can see the interior in there. But, yeah, overall, complete truck. Just needs a driver, and we have quite a bit of floorboard. I don't know. Still have never found a driver that I just in love with the way it fits in rigs. So, I don't know about all that. One day. But, uh, these are RC4Drive 155 Landys. They are a 5 lug, which probably is not correct for these. I don't remember. But uh, these are the, what are these? These were Dixie picks. You can read it on there. No, these were, what are these? Commander, Scrambler, okay. These are the 155 Scrambler tires. They're super wide. And that narrow wheel, it really gives it a nice fat look. And it actually works pretty well because it's it's got such a wide footprint. And they are pretty soft. I have no idea the condition of the foams. But, uh, They've lasted this long. The wheels are were the bare steel ones, so they have started rusting up pretty good. So we're going to take this thing out and bash it at Crawlfest, see how it does. I have no idea what to expect from the courses there, so I was like, I need to just start getting rigs ready, making sure everything works, and then we'll tinker with it as we go. So I think next up, now that the Amigo is not a wheelie machine, I'm going to look at my uh, old red. After I drove it up my land last time, the shocks have leaked everything out and they're not in a great condition and it was giving me a few little issues. So we may swap on some different shocks. 
some of my old favorites. All right, next up, Old Red. First Trail Finder 2 I ever built. Fully linked suspension and it's a dang good crawler. Got these big Mickey Thompson Baja claws and uh, these boom racing wheels are pretty sharp. I dig the way it looks. But this truck's been bulletproof forever. I've had issues with the shocks leaking before and not so long ago I upgraded to some, I think they were Proline Power Strokes and they've leaked out everything now as well. So, I think, you can see here, I'm going to go back to old trusty. I've had these for a while. These are original SCX-10 kit shocks. And these, I've had a lot better success with these not leaking than I have anything else. Um, I've got two different kind here. These are just hodgepodge together. These have the dual rate springs. And, I don't know, the back ones have a single spring. So I don't know which one should go where, <laughs> that's the problem. The rear is so light, I think we'll just run the single spring. These power strokes have been fantastic and they look a lot better, but my fronts, I'm not getting the rebound. I, when I was up in my land, I adjusted the coil a little bit and it was I was having some issues. And I don't know if that's due to the shock or the shock just being dry. The springs on those are quite a bit thinner, but I know for a fact I ran these for years on this truck with no issues. And everything else on this truck's pretty well sorted. I've got a 1080 uh, quick run. I've got it on the DX5. I've got a Reefs Triple Four, and I've got my 35 turn home tobby in there. And yeah, other than the shocks, nothing else to do on this thing. So I think we're gonna swap those things around. I hope I don't mess up my ride height and my droop setup, but we need to do something. And I don't have the patience or any shock oil right now to rebuild shocks messy process. an oily mess <laughs> dirty mess too everything down here is so greased from the shocks leaking everything I know this is kind of a downgrade we got plastic uh, ends on these plastic balls in the ends of the shocks these pro lines I forgot they had this built-in thing that's a plastic end too so I had one metal end but these are pretty much I mean there's it's it's all spring there's nothing left in it this is still feeling pretty good. Still get my squeak, which I love so much. Um, I am having one little issue. My steering arm is slightly hits the bottom of this shock over here. Only gives, causes me a problem on hard turning driver side. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it. It's been that way forever. We'll see if it causes us any grief in the future. Actually, out on the trail, it'd be something easy to fix, but. I'm thinking this is going to be a lot better. The rear feels fantastic. I mean, full articulation. We throw the body back on and we'll look at how it flexes. All right, so it does look a little bit higher in the front, but I'm okay with that because I think that's going to work out just fine. So got a little bit of rubbing in the rear, just like we always do. I'm having a little issues keeping the body on straight because I rolled it pretty good at USTE and I bent my brazed bumper and it's a little out of alignment, but it's all good. There we go. Got that side in. Still, all around favorite truck. Things 
pretty well built. I'm pretty happy with it. So, make sure everything's square up here. The body's been through it, man. It feels a million times better than it did, though. So we'll put those Proline shocks in the old shock storage container I've got, and we'll have to rebuild them at some point and see if we can find something else to use them on. You remember back oh, a couple years ago, I did a video on all my storage and you know, organization for all my parts. That's what's allowed me to build the stuff I've been building. I talk about putting those shocks back in my shock storage bin. I've got everything in here. RC four wheel drive pieces, 1 18th scale, extra springs, old axial shocks, newer axial shocks, put those pro lines, some uh, off-brand shocks, good long RC four wheel drive shocks. I got, there's a little shock hole in there. That's good. On the top I've got a little bit more. I got some touring car stuff, little odds and ends caps. Um, these are the stock shocks that came on the C2X. Those are some Traxxas shocks, I think. They look like Traxxas shocks. It's extra springs and stuff. Also got some of these. These are the new RC four wheel drive little uh, Bilstein. They've got them in, I think, 30 and 35 and 40 millimeter. They may have them even shorter. Those I've been loving for the rat rod builds. But just got to keep everything organized. So it looks like moving on to the C2X. Truck everybody loved the hate when it came out. Man. Everybody said the axles are too big. They're plastic. It's bed's weird. I mean, it's just so many things. Um, that's I probably still get a comment on that every day on YouTube about the bed I made for mine. And that was just an old Tamiya Hilux bed. I mean, the body lines are the same. Just cut it up, and made it work, and it broke, and then we fixed it, and you know. <laughs> but we've done a lot of stuff to this one, and I think it may be time to do a little bit more. Um, this one does have the scale V8. Everything, I'm, I like the way the body is. I did that uh, slight patina over the factory gray. And it actually came out pretty good. I like the look of it. It was easy. And then we've got these giant uh, black rhino wheels. Which I think look fantastic on here. And the tires. The Thornbirds, everybody said those aren't rock crawling tires. Well, in tent scale, they work pretty well. And they were actually firm enough with the stock foams, and I don't have to worry about this flat spotting. So, yeah, we may look at the servo on this. I'm trying to remember what all's even on it. We need to pull the body off and look. That's the only thing I have left on this to do is the interior. It comes on already done. It has the full interior with the bench seats, the metal trim on the door. So it's going to be a little bit of work to strip all that down and uh, paint the interior. But it's got to be done at some point because... We're running out of other things to do on the truck, so we'll get to it eventually. This truck's been pretty bulletproof. Uh, you can see it made quite a few big changes. Uh, we did the RC four-wheel drive full-scale V8. We got the Edelbrock fancy schmancy details, which is why we cut a hole in the hood so you can see the breather at least sticking through. Um, the plug wires, I'll never get them all to stay in the distributor. That's just, <laughs> it wasn't meant to be. But the main things, the other upgrades, the ch chassis, stock the suspension has been modified i've lengthened the arms just a little bit to get the right squat i look i like squatted look i like and we've got the newer style rc four wheel drive king shocks and those i don't have puddles of fluid that would link a little bit the truck set for a little bit i've taken it to my land three or four times and everything still feels pretty good on it this is a good crawler i think so uh, adding the weight, we had to change the transfer case. We did a whole thing on this. It really uh, changed this whole truck a lot, having that extra weight up front. I think it performs even better. So I've fine-tuned all of that. I think it's time to change the servo. Looking at how hard that's going to be to get. There's all these extra light wires. Get my <laughs> coolant hose there sticking up. But I've got my last Reefs 444. And I think we're going to put, them on, put it on this truck, show it some love, and see if we can really improve things. So I'm going to hook a battery up to this, figure out what radio I've got it on, and see how that one sounds. So this is the newer generation RC four-wheel drive twister servo. Doesn't chatter, doesn't make a bunch of noise. It feels pretty good, but it's not a, not a triple four. <laughs> So I think we're going to swap that. We're still running the stock ESC. I did swap it over to my old DX3 radio. So we're off the RTR setup. 
So I think the next step is going to be the servo. So it looks like I know I had to do a lot of modifications to the engine to get when we put the V8 in sanding down that front piece to get it to fit with the servo. I'm not sure if I've lowered the servo at all. It doesn't look like I have. So we just hope that this reef is the same height and this doesn't foil our whole plans having a V8. I did forget I haven't fixed my trail fix. So when I lengthen this, I had to <laughs> use a different drive shaft. I think this is off an SCX-10. And boy, is it janky, but it works. It just gives me a little bit of slop in the drive line, but it's just some body clips bent through. I was missing the pins on that end. Um, probably don't have time to get a new drive shaft set out before the event, so we're just going to rock it like it is. <laughs> wonder why that's wet. Hmm. Yeah, it just adds a little bit of extra slop in there, but it'll be all right. Wasn't a hard swap, but luckily it fit nicely up against the V8. Got a little buzzing. It's probably because of my wonderful wiring job here. <laughs> Either that or it's having all the lights and stuff run with it. Who knows? But not nearly anything like it was. The other servo was decent, but this is violently strong, <laughs> we'll call it. So, excited to try that out. And the stuff, every time I've hooked up one of these reef servos, it just works. Like, there's no, I didn't need to center it, align it, set anything. It just, just works right out of the box. Can't argue with that. So, yeah, I think we'll call this rig good. I do see what some folks were talking about. Everybody's telling me these axles are weak and blah, blah, blah. There's one weak spot that I can see. That is your hand hard mount right there I can see it bending a little bit you see if it's just that screw is loose it very well could be from all my travels yeah, it is flexing a little bit they do offer aluminum upgrades for that so I think we might look into that Ooh, I do see another loose screw though a hub <laughs> Like I said, most of this stuff gets loose just from driving to places in the cargo box on my truck. So I need to go give it a good once over and tighten everything down. But that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. I appreciate y'all watching and um, look forward to meeting y'all out at the events. I'm going to be at Texas Crawl Fest in April the 22nd, I think. Yeah, weekend after next. And uh, Beat the Creek in Maysville, Kentucky. So... I have everything ready to go. Hope to see you out there. Keep a scale. I'll see y'all next time. <laughs>